as a Spyro fan since 1998, I've always stuck to the changes of the Spyro the Dragon franchise. I've played the original Spyro games developed by Insomniac, and played the other classic games that were made afterwards, even the notorious Spyro Into the Dragonfly. I even played and enjoyed the Legend of Spyro trilogy. The latest reboot that has featured Spyro is the Skylanders franchise, a Toys of Life series that has Spyro and Cinder as few of the notable playable guest stars, much like Mario and Super Smash Bros. From story novels to comics and now a television series, Spyro has come a long way, even if it's not the way most of us want him to go. As the series went on, we learned more details about our favorite purple dragon in the Skylanders universe. Some details are carry-ons, or nods, from previous Spyro games, including the Legend of Spyro trilogy, like Spyro's status as a rare purple dragon, and his ability to master more than one element, his past encounter with Skylanders Malfour he doesn't remember, his friendship with Crash Bandicoot, and his main attacks being fire and charging. Being a curious Spyro fan, I reached out to Legend of Spyro producer Michael Graham to talk about Spyro and Cinder's involvement in the Skylanders franchise. This was his response. We had a lot of discussion around the best way to treat both Spyro and Cinder throughout the early stages of development. First and foremost, it was important for us to establish a brand new universe that could introduce a slew of new heroes, but we also wanted to honor the history of Spyro and Cinder. The end of the Legend of Spyro series left both of them in a place that was open to interpretation. Were they in some sort of dragon heaven? Were they in Skylands? Were they back in their own world? It was purposely left mysterious to allow us the freedom to reintroduce these characters in a way that was very fitting for the world of Skylands while also leaving it to longtime fans, such as yourself, to use your imaginations to fill in the blanks. Spyro's world has always been a world full of imagination, and ultimately we decided that imagination was the most important aspect to carry forward into the Skylanders. For many fans, Skylanders represents a fresh start for both, for both Spyro and Cinder, but there are enough nods to previous Spyro games to allow longtime fans the freedom to imagine their own connections with the past. So the real questions are, how do you think Cinder has evolved and developed? Which nods to previous Spyro games do you think were intentional? And do you think any of these nods have deeper, have deeper meaning? Toys for Bob CEO of the Skylander franchise, Paul Ricci, added his input. From my perspective, Cinder was an opportunity to show an inverted image of Spyro. Different gender, different original alignment, and very different approach to solving problems. Spyro is a natural hero upon whom Fortune has smiled most of his life. Cinder comes from a more troubled origin and has had to earn every ounce of her heroism the hard way. This contrast not only gives the greater breadth to the role of dragons in our universe, but it also makes the friendship between Spyro and Cinder more interesting. In terms of nods to older lore, we face the eternal problems reboots always face. How you make the characters and world sufficiently new that you aren't just repeating what's already been done but also maintain enough of the heart of Spyro to be legit. And yes, people define that quite differently, I know. I was once complaining to a friend about a particular version of Star Trek, which felt wrong to me. I love the original, by the way. She advised me to imagine, yes, somewhere that somewhere there was the truer, singular version of Star Trek, but that we would never be able to see it. Instead, we get to look into that distant world through a variety of different telescopes, with which each have different lenses and are pointing at slightly different places. Maybe Spyro is like that too. In the end, my fellow fans, Spyro and Cinder's origins in the Skylanders franchise are intentionally and completely made a mystery. The producers want us to imagine how Spyro and Cinder arrived in the universe that is the Skylanders franchise. Details are constantly changing and nothing is set concrete. Fans may think Skylanders Spyro is the Spyro from the Legend of Spyro reboot or from the classic Spyro universe but its origins in the Skylander series is purposely left up to speculation. Fans are free to speculate Spyro's origins in Skylanders as they please. And it was that freedom that allowed Skylanders Academy showrunner Eric Rogers to delve deeper into Spyro's backstory in the Skylanders television series. There is a lot of Spyro's history that has yet to be revealed in the Skylanders franchise. Thanks for tuning in everyone. See you guys next time.